That Monday morning, Tanya, who was his girlfriend, called me and she said, have you heard from Michael? And I said, no, why? He drove to the bridge and parked in the parking lot. They found the car and there was a note on the passenger side of the car. I remain clear that the Golden Gate Bridge is an absolutely beautiful structure in an absolutely perfect setting for it. But I don't seek it out any longer. I avoid it if I can. I've been back to the place where she jumped. It's a hard thing. The Golden Gate Bridge needs no introduction. But behind its iconic beauty and utility lies a terrible truth. The bridge is one of the biggest destinations for suicide in the world. On average, 30 people or more are lost to the bridge each year, with the first death occurring mere months after its completion in 1937. Currently, a four foot high railing is the only thing preventing people from stepping over the edge. Calls for a more effective barrier date back to the 1950s, and construction finally began on a suicide deterrent net in 2017 more than 80 years and almost 2,000 deaths later. It's expected to be completed by the end of 2023. So why exactly did it take the net so long to get approved and built? And what will its completion mean for the families of those that were lost to the bridge? Although construction of the net formally began in 2017, the seeds of the idea took shape in 2006 with a man named David Hull. Hull lost his daughter Kathy to the bridge on October 26, 2003. For years after her passing, he shied away from using her death as anything that he felt might tarnish her memory. But as time passed and he began to connect with other survivors, a plan began to form. In the uh, second or third year, I began attending group meetings of suicide survivors. By the time uh, we got to establishing the Bridge Rail Foundation, it was clear to me that I had to use her death to prevent others. Hull became a founding member and first president of the Bridge Rail Foundation, an organization that became a key force in making the deterrent net a reality. But Hull and the foundation first had to achieve widespread support, which faced roadblocks in the form of two main historical arguments against a barrier on the bridge. The first is that any additional building on the bridge would ruin its design aesthetics or prevent visitors from viewing the surrounding vistas visible from its span. To survivors like Kay James, another member of the foundation who lost her son Michael to the bridge in 2011, this line of thinking doesn't ring true. What's a life worth? <laughs> a view? <laughs> you know, it's just a mindset that's old school. We have to be concerned about saving lives. Aesthetics? No. <laughs> Not a good argument. The second argument is the belief that if a person is intent on ending their life, they will somehow find a way to get around any barrier created to stop the attempt. Hull and James push back on this as well. I think the biggest problem is the myth that if someone wants to kill themselves, they'll find a way. I don't think most people are aware of the importance of taking away lethal means of killing yourself, how important that is. I believe clearly that if on her drive up from Santa Cruz, there had been a dog in pain in the side of the road, or if she'd had a flat tire, or if there'd been something that had prevented her from getting to that point, the crisis would have passed. Data around these types of suicides support their opinions. Similar deterrents installed on other landmarks around the world have drastically reduced or eliminated deaths at those sites. And multiple studies suggest that nine out of 10 people who attempt suicide and survive will not go on to die by suicide at a later date. But the biggest hurdle by far to overcome, and the one that caused the most delays, came down to simply breaking through bureaucracy and finding funding. It's been a process to get the funding. It's been a long process, but it's been longer for other people who came before me, people like Dave. Let's take a look back at that process. In 2008, a major milestone came when the Golden Gate Bridge District finally approved the addition of the net on the underside of the bridge. In 2012, language was inserted in the Federal Transportation Bill that specifically allowed for use of highway construction funds to create safety barriers and nets, opening up a source of funding. And in 2014, $76 million in funding was finally committed by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, Caltrans, California's Mental Health Services Act, and the Golden Gate Bridge District itself. 
However, since then, the actual construction cost has ballooned to more than $200 million, with the funding gap filled by federal and state grants, bridge tolls, and individual and foundation donations. And now, despite all the setbacks, the net is finally due to be completed at the end of 2023, 15 years after it was first approved. The moment is bittersweet for those who helped create it. There are things to be said about that whole responsibility and responsibility of society and the rest of us around suicidal people. That night that Kathy died, I stopped on the steps and looked down the bridge and I said, why hasn't someone done something about this? When the net is finished, something will have been done about it. Parents and loved ones um, won't, will never know what's been done for them. Let's finish the job. Let's finish the job and save those lives. <laughs>